Phil from Tech for Techs here. Today we're going to be looking at this. It's a Thermal Take Versa H17. It's a micro ATX case and it comes with a side window. Okay, so we're looking at this Versa H17 case by Thermal Take. It's got the side window on it and it is a micro case. But uh, let's just have a quick look at the box before we do anything else. As you can see, it's pretty much a plain brown box with black print of what the actual case looks like. The reverse side is basically exactly the same. You've got your different languages on this side and on this side here, uh, which is hard to see but it's also it's got all your measurements for obviously the sizes what type of um, uh, fans it can take what size CPU coolers and different things like that but otherwise it's pretty much a plain box okay let's open this up and have a look what we've got inside um, There we go. Okay, first things first, we've got the manual inside there, which is there, looks pretty straightforward. And in the back of that bag, it's also got the product warranty information there. Let's have a look at what we have inside the box. There we go. Okay. As you can tell, I open quite a lot of these uh, boxes up, so the easiest way I tend to find is open the top, turn it upside down, and slide the box off rather than reaching inside and trying to get to the actual um, case that way. And there we go. So there's your machine for you. Okay, as you can see now it's outside of the box. Um, we can have a quick look at it. On the front, it's plain plastic there, it's sort of got a, a slight textured feel to it. You've got ventilation down each side of the front. On the top you've got your headphone microphone, reset button, hard drive, LED, start button which does look like it's got LED light around it, USB 2's, you've got two of those, and a USB 3.0 there. On the top as well you've got a mesh to cover up the top where you could put a small radiator uh, or a fan. Uh, on the side as you can see it's got a clear window. It is acrylic plastic or whatever you want to call it uh, but it isn't glass. On the back it's pretty straightforward. You've got your motherboard area there. You've got four um, slots for PCI um, and then you've got your power supply there. Regarding the power supply on the bottom, you do have your dust filter on the bottom there. Not a fan of these styles because I would like it where it just pull out and slide back in. And the only problem with those is if you need to clean them, it's not easy to get to. So you really have to turn the machine off, turn it upside down uh, to get this bit off, and then you've got to try and get it back in properly and so forth, which can be a bit of a bit of a pain as you can see they're a little bit fiddly um, getting it exactly how you want um, so you've got that there um, there's some screw holes by the looks of it down here so I'm guessing you may be able to mount a hard drive or something towards the bottom we'll have a look inside in a few minutes and then on this side it is completely plain so this is a micro case so uh, I'm guessing we'll only be able to fit in uh, micro ATX boards uh, but we'll have a look um, the fan, there only seems to be one fan pre-installed, that's on the back. By the looks of it, I'd say that was a 120mm fan. Um, it looks like a thermal tape fan by the looks of it, from what I can see. Um, but we'll have a look at it, see what the airflow is like, especially with the small intake areas along the front. Okay, let's have a quick look at the inside of this. Okay, so yeah, we've got your 12cm fan there which hasn't got any RGB on it by the looks of it and it's just a standard thermal tape case which is on the back there um, otherwise you've got enough room to fit a micro board in there obviously anything bigger isn't going to fit but you do have plenty of room for a graphics card you could fit in the graphics card all the way from front to back because there's no CD bays or anything like that what's blocking it so you could put 
pretty much as big as card as you really wanted in there. Uh, power supply is shrouded. This shroud doesn't look like it's fixed. There doesn't seem to be any screw holes to get it out. So that's built into the actual casing like that. Uh, don't get me wrong, you, pr um, you probably never need to take it out anyway, but it is fixed. Um, there is plenty of cable in there. Obviously you've got where your the back of the motherboard is, where your CPU should be around about there. Um, you've got a couple of holes here and some smaller holes further along. But this is where you're going to be mounting mainly your hard drives and stuff like that by the looks of it. Um, let's have a quick look at the other side. Let's just quickly take it off with the thumb screws. There we go. And on the back you can see there's not much to look at there. So you've got your cable manage, uh, managing holes there. Yeah, you'd put your SSD hard drives um, in there. There is no bays especially for hard drives or anything like that, so they have to screw onto there. So you'd only probably be able to fit a couple on there. Uh, and obviously your power supply would go down this bottom area. Cabling all looks nice, it's all black, apart from one thing which I always complain about, which is the USB 2 and the audio headers. I've got your multicoloured connections, or rainbow, uh, cable, rainbow cables as I like to call them, um, which unfortunately they stretch across your board, they do look not very nice, especially when you're trying to colour match everything. Um, a lot of manufacturers are the same with those, it's very rare you see them actually cover those up black. Um, they've got a bit of a shrouding up to about half way to there. Why they couldn't have tidied it up a little bit more, who knows. Um, it's got obviously a USB 3 connection there as well. And then you've got all your cables, internal speakers and screws, cable ties and everything you'll need in the little bag there. Okay, so what we're doing is we're going to test the power supply here with this little switch. Basically, it's designed to test power supplies, or it used to be a few years ago. Uh, these days we just use it to check to make sure that there's power going through and to test things like this. The fan itself is connected up through the Molex connector on the power supply, and because we're using this, it doesn't have to be connected up to a motherboard. So what we're going to do is check to see what sort of temperatures, um, or should I say what sort of uh, airflow is actually coming uh, off of that actual fan. So, just to give you a rough idea, you can see the smoke there. So it's quite a bit. And then as soon as we turn the fan on, you can see it's actually blowing it pretty well. Um, so there isn't much of an issue there. So what we're going to do now is try that on the front and see if those intakes on the front actually sucking a lot of air or not. So, to give you a rough idea, if I don't set the place on fire. Right, so that fan is now on. And we'll see how much of this, how much air is actually getting pushed through the front intakes. Pretty much nothing. Probably a little bit. So there's a little bit of fresh air going through there. So ideally, on this case, it's not giving you enough, no, definitely not giving you enough airflow coming from the front to cool the whole machine down unless you've got a really low powered machine. I would recommend uh, getting at least one more fan on the front of this machine. One thing you can see from here is the top intake here has taken on quite a bit of um, air in. So it looks like most of the air intake from this case to cool uh, it is coming through the top sucked in and then down through the back. Okay so we've set the machine up, we've put an extra fan in the front of the case just to see how it performs uh, with the airflow on the front because it wasn't very good with just the one fan in there but even saying that we've added the extra fan on it is taking in a bit more air but the airflow is not brilliant in all honesty as you can see most of the air on the front of the machine is just wafting straight up and very little is actually getting taken in um, which is a little disappointing um, the intakes on the front of the machine are pretty poor in all honesty they're not the best um, it does take a bit in 
but considering how much air the back fan is chucking out, just to give you an idea, as you can see it's going that fast it's pretty much blowing the smoke away. The top again does take in some of the air. I think there's more air coming in from the top vent than there is from the front. Okay, this is what the back of the front panel looks like. You can see the mesh down the edges and as you can see a lot of it is covered up by bits of plastic. So only around about 50% of that mesh on the front, what's supposed to intake fresh air, is actually doing anything. Um, so it's a little disappointed there um, because there's not a lot of air getting through to the inside of the machine from that front panel and a lot of it what's going out the back of the machine is coming from the top um, so if you're getting a water cooler on the front of this case um, to be honest it's not going to get a lot of fresh air from there um, there is a bit of a hole on the bottom which there is in most cases um, which will let a little bit of air in but unfortunately the airflow through there was pretty poor. So in conclusion, due to the airflow situation this would be better suited for a home or office machine or a very very low po uh, powered gaming machine. I would suggest uh, remarketing it as such until the airflow can be corrected. Uh, once corrected, bring out a uh, version 2 or whatever for the gaming crowd. There is actually a lot of space in there to do a lot of things. You can, um, you've got room for quite large graphics cards, coolers, even power supply. So for actually a small case, it's actually good in, on that side of things. But the problem is, is that airflow. If you've got a radiator on the front, it's not going to suck in a lot of air. One way I found what may help is if you put an extraction fan on the top and one on the back then it basically sort of forces the air to come through the front but that doesn't mean you will need to put a fan on the top um, obviously the top of the inside not the top of the outside of the case but that would actually suck the air in through the front and give you a bit more um, air flow but still it's not ideal but saying that, it's still a good machine for um, an office or a home user or something like that who doesn't need uh, a high-end machine. So if you're using probably anything up to an i3 processor and a built-in graphics or even a low-end graphics card, it should be more than plenty. But uh, it wouldn't be nice to see that airflow a little bit better. But the positives of this case are it's uh, attractive. It's got a good cable management, specifically for its size and obviously its budget. Bear in mind this is a roughly a £50 case, so that is quite a, a cheap case. Um, the I.O. ports and the power buttons on top, they're all good. You've got the connections you need for most people. The rear fan seems pretty good. It extracts the um, air pretty well, as you can see from the videos. Uh, the negative, unfortunately, is the main the airflow throughout. Without adding extra fans in and quite a few fans, you would need to. Um, the basically the suction from the front is actually pretty bad, especially if you've got something behind that front panel like a, a rad or something along that line. It will um, suffer a little bit. Um, dust filter on the bottom. Um, does not slide out so that means you have to turn it upside down to clean the dust filter which can be a bit of a pain uh, the small intake area on the front obviously what we've spoke about uh, mesh on the front um, it's covered by a lot of plastic on the inside of the um, the, the casing on the front panel um, so it doesn't do very good um, and obviously, as we said, the water, if you had a water cooler, it's not going to get the air. Uh, the box is not the best for um, showing off, but again, it's a £50 case. Not many £50 cases come with a decent box. Um, the multi-coloured wires on the USB and the audio headers, I absolutely hate that on cases. If you're wanting to go for a gaming case something with a w or something with a window and you're going to be seen inside, you should not have those multi-coloured um, connections on the end of USB or audio headers. Um, and I wish they would have included a front fan due to the lack of intake. I know it didn't help too much, but it would have uh, helped a little bit. And maybe even having the two fans on there would help a lot. Uh, overall, 
I wouldn't say it was the best case in the world. It's good for, as again, an office or something small like that with um, the airflow issues. Um, so we're just going to give this a bronze award. Thanks for watching this video all the way to the end. Don't forget to press the subscribe button over here. That way you'll get all the latest news and all the reviews we do on a weekly basis. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.